All right, guess what? Monday night rolls around once again, and it's time it's for It's so Voice predictable. Of... I know. It That's comes around every time this Monday. time of week. It seems to be Monday night. Yeah. I, you know, we make it, should make it a five day week, but, you know, make it a metric week. <laughs> See, anyway. Anyway, tonight on our show, Adam Berner is going to be joining us from, mm-hmm. uh, from Fort Collins, Colorado. Yep. And, uh, Colorado. Talk, Cal- they say, the locals call it Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> But he's going to talk about, uh, you know, he does a lot of audiobook work and a lot of other stuff. Because he knows so many things, we're going to talk about all of those things. Mm-hmm. And he's got a, a new website, which is going to be very useful to voice actors. And his booth experiences. That's right. You get to see his booths. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, what's and we got stuff in tech. We'll talk about what we've been dealing with lately in client studios. Oh, God, it's a pile of things. Anyway. All that, the news, and much more coming up on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yeah. Well, what? we're not exactly sure what this is. No, actually we do. Somebody, Somebody sent us their booth, it. but he was much more proud of the wall. David Hugh, if you're out there. It's, yeah. We Rather than it, looking at his rack of equipment, this we thought was more much, fun. Much more interesting. Especially when you look at the turnaround and take a look at the mace. The, There's, the mace there are maces chain. hanging behind <laughs> That is cool. Yes. That's why we love it when you send in your pictures so we That's can right. see your crazy studios. Right. But he'd sent it in landscape. He did a good job. <laughs> nice job, David. Thank anyway, uh, tonight on the show, Adam Werner will be joining us, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll talk about uh, all the cool stuff in his career and uh, a new interesting website that he's created for us voice actors uh, that uh, helps us with our pronouncing of words. Including the name of the website which we'll talk about later, which is unpronounceable. Uh, anyway, and we've got some tech stuff. If you've got a question for us, Jack Daniel is rapidly racing back to uh, the uh, his own studio to cut something. Look, but So lucky he lives so close. Yeah, so if you do have a tech question about your home voiceover studio, throw it in the chat room mm-hmm. uh, right now. And everything seems to be working well this week. Uh, yeah. on YouTube and on our website and on Facebook and everywhere else that voiceover body shop can be seen, heard and digested. Um, let's see what else is going on. Oh, aside from Adam Werner, after the show tonight, we have a, we have a new cartoon from, from Lenstar Productions and Jacob. I got to star, take, do about four different voices in this thing. Yeah. It's called Salt Man. <laughs> And since George is laughing, you and know it's actually m- funny. Many right? pun. If you like puns, and I like a pun, you're gonna like it. Yeah, and full of puns. That'll be right after the show tonight. Well, it'll be part of the show. Next week on the show, we have to we have to 
Hammer Get this, this one in early. Hammer it. Hammer early it, hammer and it. often. Yes. Uh, we're doing a live backyard concert here at the VoiceOver Body Shop. Uh, Rosie and Brian Amador and their daughter Alyssa, Sol y Canto. Great traditional uh, Latin folk music and some not so traditional and a few surprises. Some people you wouldn't expect could actually sing. But uh, but we're, they're going to be doing a couple of sets for us live in our backyard. If you'd like to be here live in the voiceover body shop backyard uh, to see this live backyard concert, uh, we're sending the announcements over Facebook, over our mailing list. If you can't find it, you're not looking. It's on VOBS.TV, right above where the video window is. There's a button right there that says buy your tickets now. Right. You Only can 20 click bucks, and the proceeds are going to... Uh, Puerto Rican hurricane relief. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, even a year later, they still need a lot of help there. Yeah. You know, aside from paper towels. Anyway, uh, let's get the show on the road here because right now it's time for. Big Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. And here is the voiceover extra news for October 29th already. Should you incorporate your voiceover business? Well, here's the age-old question for voice actors. Should you incorporate your voiceover business or just fold all your income and expense tabs into your personal finances? Well, if you ask an attorney or a tax advisor, they're likely to advise looking into forming a corporation. Mm. There are a number of benefits to this, including protecting your personal assets in the event you're sued for something related to voiceovers. For this type of advice, we turn to an attorney who knows this biz because, well, he's in it too. That's Rob Siglin Paglia. You know him. He's been on the show. He's an, he's an attorney, he's a voice actor, he's an on-camera actor and film producer who's written a book on inter- entertainment law called Voice Over Legal, which is published by Voice Over Extra. This week, Voice Over Extra will publish an excerpt from that book on VO business structure, which focuses on the benefits in, of incorporating and your options. Here are some highlights. First, Rob notes that many who are in the early times of a voiceover career think, Well, until I start to earn some money at this, what's the point of creating a formal business structure? Rob's response to the question is that it shouldn't be whether to incorporate, but rather how to best incorporate. Why? Well, for one, a corporation protects your personal assets in the event you're sued for your voiceover-related activities. As the voiceover legal book notes, your liabilities can include inadvertently violating copyrights, for instance, in your demos. You might also be liable if you do product endorsements or celebrity impersonations. And then what if you are cited for slander or libel? In these situations, the corporation is sued, but not you personally. Also, in, in most states, having a corporation eliminates the need to file a trade name certificate or fictitious name certificate to use the DBA name, doing business as, um, such as ABC, Terrific Voice. And at tax time, the IRS weighs its decision on whether to allow your deductions, such as for home studio equipment, training, and conferences, on whether it sees you as a voiceover business or just a hobby. Well, if you've incorporated, you're looking more like a business. Yet, a decision needs to be made about what form the corporation will take. For options uh, to form a corporation, one would be a limited liability company, an LLC, a C corporation, C corp, or S corp, S corporation. Most popular for voice actors, though, and the least expensive route is to form an LLC. In fact, an LLC is extremely simple to set up in almost all states, Rob says. And unless a voiceover artist has employees working for the LLC, it doesn't even require a separate employer identification number, an EIN, like a corporation would need. Overall, though, which type of corporation is right for your, you depends on your individual legal and tax circumstances. Rob advises speaking to a qualified attorney and tax advisor to decide which one will serve you best. Rob adds that he agrees, in theory, 
that voiceover is a relatively liability-free industry. But as an attorney, he knows better than that. He sure does. He says, The sad fact in the United States these days is that whenever money changes hands or an injury occurs, the potential for a lawsuit exists. All right, you'll find more details in this lengthy article this week at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Mm, yes, well, Mr. Siglin Paglia, whose name we have practiced so many times. We uh, have. He's right on when it comes to this stuff. He is the legal expert when it comes to voiceover legal stuff, which is why his book is called Voiceover Legal. Yeah, I mean, probably because I've worked years. with... Uh, so many voice actors who are incorporated. Yeah. It's something that I've been nagging my CPA about pretty much every year for about 10 years. Is this the year? Should I go incorporate? Should I go incorporate? And she did say in my case that next year is probably the year for me to incorporate. And I'll probably be going S Corp for my purposes. So yeah, it's a little bit of a cost to set it up. You got to have, you really want to have your stuff together. You want to have your personal accounts completely separated from business. I've been getting to that point with the way I run things, so hopefully it won't be that big a deal. But yeah. She said it's the first year where it will, it'll actually save me money, enough to be worth the cost and effort of doing it. So looking forward to that. All right. Well, um, this week I got a little notice as I was opening up my, my, uh, my, my Apple computer this, about two days ago, and it said, do you want to go to Mojave? And I'm like, and you clicked, uh, 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 no. and I and I thought, <laughs> what would George say? What well, would George if, say? If you've been paying attention for and the last eight years, when I told you this every <laughs> damn year at this time of year, no, don't update yet. Um, or up in this case, we're talking about an upgrade. And I'll talk real quick about what that means. You got upgrades and updates. Updates are just incremental changes to the software you already have, the version you have. So if you're on High Sierra, the good news is if you're on High Sierra and you've got the last update, which I think is 10.13.6, you you never have to worry about another update coming out and breaking something because you are now already at the end of life of that. There's no more updates to that software. Right. Mojave now is an upgrade. So that is a bigger step when you change to Mojave. You're now changing out the entire operating system. And in doing so, a lot of times there's a bit of the throwing the baby out with the bathwater when you do this uh, because you're inheriting a new version of operating system which hasn't really been in the wild for very long. Yeah. And Apple tries as they might to make a solid, totally debugged software, but we all know that it, it, is, not, it is rarely totally debugged in version 1 and sometimes not even in version 2 and 3. That's why there is a 0.5 and 0.6 version. They do keep debugging the software over time. So when do you update? When, is it, when does it make sense? I was just getting used to High Sierra. Right. You're, you're getting used to what you got. When do you update? Well, first of all, don't update right away or don't upgrade right away. Sorry to interchange the two. Do not upgrade to Mojave right away. Give it at least a few versions for the software to have been debugged and go through some, some real-world testing in the community to figure out what it needs. Um, if you're Jones and really Jones and like, I got to have it, I got to have it, have a good reason to have it. Like you're missing a feature that's going to improve your business, you know, that kind of thing. Or if you've got a separate laptop that's sort of like your sort of just daily browse the web, personal use computer, you know, go ahead and throw it on that one. That's fine. But you definitely want to wait to do any major software upgrades on your production computer. That's your computer you used to make a living with, the one that you need to work every day, all day. It has to start up each day. That's the one you want to wait on. It Don't do that one right away. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I'm like, but I love, I like updating one computer at a time. Like, I'll take... The yeah. laptop, which, by the way, you're charging your computer on my charger. So I'll, well, good thing you have a good battery. I sort of. You have a little uh, bit left. Yeah, uh, but it's like I'll try it on the laptop first because everything is on my main Mac Mini, even though it's aging a little bit. But yeah. uh, if it works there, I figure it works on the other one. And I've rarely had a problem, no matter what version it is. 
Yeah, what, what can happen is, and I've had this happen, is if you have a, two different operating systems on your two machines, your laptop, your desktop, over time, um, what happens is they, they start updating their pages, their, all their other apps, and then they become so integrated with the new operating system when you make a document on the new one, you can't open it on the other computer. And that's a pain in the neck. So once you realize that the new OS is stable and you're happy with it and you want to put it on the, on your production computer, go ahead. Just make sure you've backed up everything. Make sure you check to make sure your drivers for all of your hardware are compatible with it. And just, just be ready to have some downtime in case something doesn't go quite as planned. Right. But just do it smartly and you'll be fine. Right. Now, what's this about don't buy an iPad today? Don't buy an iPad today. All don't right. buy a MacBook Air today. You'd be insane. Well, the day's almost over anyway. Right. But tomorrow, Apple has a big announcement in Brooklyn. They're doing a big show. They're doing a big announcement of new hardware. So we're going to find out what that is. The, the, the predictions are new iPads, iPad Pros. Um, How could they possibly improve on that? They have to. In order for them to be the most profitable company in the entire world, they have to make new computers. <laughs> That's how they survive. We don't need them, but they'll make them. So anyway, they're going to have new iPads. The things I'm more excited about are the things that I use more often. I don't really use the iPad for very much. I use it to DJ parties or train and things like Not much else. But for me, the MacBook Air, I'm excited to see what they're going to do because they haven't really updated that in a few years. Even more so, though, the new Mac Mini. They're supposed to announce a new Mac Mini. Is it going to look completely different? Is it going to have all different ports? Is it going to... What, what's it going to be? I have no idea. That's the one that, to me, is the most interesting, because I am I love my Mac Mini. I've had... Dan and I, have, I think we have the same one, actually. 2011 quad-core. Bomb... This These machines have been really great to us. It just keeps going and going very reliable like it does everything i need to do it's getting a little bit slow for doing video production but for everything else it's been great so what's the new one going to be i'm excited to find out if it's a real improvement or not so right. anyway don't buy anything <laughs> wait till tomorrow see what the announcements are about then consider it and again you may not be making sense to buy the new version of a piece of hardware too again it has to be debugged a little while so get if you're going to get something brand spanking new shiny, try it out. Make sure it works well before you go full in and sell the old one. All right. Well, good advice there. So you're all all of you are doing this trying to update it. <laughs> Don't do it quite yet. All right. Uh, we got more tech stuff to deal with. If you got a tech question, throw it in the chat room. Mm -hmm. George and I will be thrilled to answer it. And we're going to talk about some of the weird crap we've been dealing with in the last week. Boy, you guys do the strangest things out there. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop, so do not go anyway. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. VOBS is still on? Seriously? Hey, how do you think about your voiceover career? Are you frustrated with your lack of success, wishing you had more auditions and bookings and making more money? We all do. And we all have thoughts like, I'm not good enough to be doing this professionally. I'm just faking it. I need to join the union as soon as I can. That's one of my favorites. I'm too old to get booked. I can't get started until everything is perfect. We get that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, sound familiar? Well, if you could only change your mindset and get rid of those ridiculous rules, well, that would help a lot. Well, vo to go goes David H. Lawrence the 17th has just what you need. He completed a 21-day journey with nearly 100 voiceover and on-camera talents, just like you. It was called Believe 2018, and he recorded every single session meaning you can take this journey now, too, at the pace you want and change things for the better. Get the success you deserve by destroying your limiting beliefs and replacing them with powerful, productive, enabling beliefs. And do so on your own schedule. Here's the link. The link. The link. <laughs> I do this professionally. Go get the 25 hours of video and audio. 
the daily chat logs, and more, and begin your own journey. The link is vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. That's vo, the number two, gogo.com forward slash believe. It's ridiculously cheap, and it's ridiculously effective. Once again, vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. VOBS, proven anybody can have a show these days. All righty, we're back at VoiceOver Body Shop in our medieval set tonight. The dungeon. <laughs> Speak now. All right. Um, you know, every week we get emails mm -hmm. in our own private little emails from our own individual websites like George's website, which is... That is the uh, georgethetech.com. Right. And my website, which is the home studio, uh, home voiceover studio.com. Rolls off the tongue. It does. God, I was lucky to get that URL. <laughs> um, but uh, we get email from people saying, help. Or, hey, I just bought a manly microphone and an Avalon uh, preamp that goes into an Apollo and it's, you know, I'm having trouble with it. Well, that's because <laughs> you didn't listen to us in the first place. Got to keep it simple. It's not the equipment that gets you work. And you don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. We say it all the time because it's true. Yes. It's, if you go out there and you buy something really expensive, thinking that's going to change things, well, it's not really going to help. Now, you used to work with Don LaFontaine. I did. The Don. Yeah. You were his personal engineer in his studio. And people always ask you, what did Don use in his studio? Because I want to get that same stuff so that I'm as successful as Don LaFontaine. And you would tell them, what did you put in their studio, <laughs> in his studio? It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I would go into Don's studio after, you know, I wasn't there all the time. But when I did come in to fix something or whatever... He would have different mics put up in that room. And I'd be like, what mic is that? And he's like, oh, these guys sent this thing to me, so I threw it up in my booth. <laughs> he could put any mic up. It didn't matter. because A Radio Shack electret condenser <laughs> mic. Don LaFontaine is what you put in that studio. It's true. <laughs> it, it, it was his talent, and the room was, to, was tuned very nicely. We, you know, and, and people do ask and do buy the gear that I, uh, that I put in there. And you know what? If, if you have the means and you want to have the fun toys you know i'm not gonna stop you it ain't gonna make the difference though trust me it's it's gonna take years before having some bling bling toys in your studio is gonna make that kind of a difference so right. don't blow the money there quite yet get the room dialed in get your acoustics and your sound noise levels down right that's when you that's where you should put your money right well and there's a way best way to put your money is to deal with us because we actually know what the things to do that are correct are a little bit of money here or here is going to help save you and direct thousands. that money in the right direction. And yeah, we could save you thousands of dollars, thousands easily. of dollars and hours and hours, <laughs> bless you of mind numbing frustration. <laughs> Indeed. You know, I mean, things are getting a little easier. I mean, some, some software is a little bit more idiot proof than it used to be. We yeah. will make sure that that money goes in the right place. Right. You know, when you when you have us on board with you, it's going to be money well spent. Yeah, because we're going to show you the
the three important things that you have to deal with. One, your acoustics, sound coming in that we don't want to come in, sound bouncing around all over the place, which never happens in this booth, by the way, which is why it sounds so damn good. Uh, and the other thing is proper mic technique. Yeah. You know, if you <clears throat> use proper mic technique and you don't need a pop screen, if you use the mic right, you can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers all afternoon and all evening long, and you're not going to get a plosive. And you can even be really close to the mic. Peter Piper picked a pep of pickled peppers and not pop the mic if you know it actually worked the mic. That's right. So we see these pictures of people wearing headphones like you, and uh, and and you know, or going like this right up to the mic with a pop screen there. Some people may argue with me about this, but that's got very little to do with voiceover. It has a lot to do with pictures and Facebook Mm -hmm. and people's websites. This is what a voice actor is supposed to look like. They're all supposed to look like Gary Owen, I guess. (laughs) Um, But uh, that's not the case. And we want to sit down with you in uh, over, over zoom or Skype or FaceTime or actually in your very studio. If you happen to be here in the greater Los Angeles area and help you out with this stuff and, Go through your studio and ask you the right questions. How do you do what you do? What type of work are you doing? What's your workflow? You know, why are you doing this in your bathroom? You know, things like that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are concerned about the fact that I can't be in their studio face to face. You know, I'm not in your city or I missed you when when you were in my city, which, by the way, let me thank everybody who were able to bring me into their studio while I was visiting New York. That was really great. Um, But I we both have gotten so good at working remotely. You know, we can hear a room and very quickly determine that there's something hard, a hard object near the mic, a table right below it. A, or... be- a bell-shaped lamp. I've got this ringing in my studio. <laughs> got a lamp a in it? Oh, yeah. Lamp, Get yeah. rid of the lamp. It's gone. It's a miracle. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, but I do occasionally see people go a little bit bonkers with the acoustic treatment. Yeah. Where to the point where they wrap everything in the studio with something like blankets, foam, towels. Right. You generally don't need to worry about small round things like a lamp pole, a post, a, you know, a stand. Those things aren't such a big deal it's, unless they have some kind of a ringing property like a bell shaped lamp. It's rare that those things are those really are never a problem. The sound hits that cer- cylindrical surface and just scatters. You know, it, right. it doesn't bounce off of it. So you generally don't need to worry about coating literally everything in towels and foam. Uh, that's not as important. It, it's really those hard surfaces that are at the very least that you can reach from your mic. Like if you're at the mic and you can reach out and touch something that's hard, that should probably not be hard anymore. It should probably be soft and absorbing. Right. That yep. seems to work pretty well for you a lot of people. You can have your dog there or your cat, and a lot of people do. How many times <laughs> have we walked into a place and there's cat fur all over there? Stuff. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't doesn't help the sound. All yeah, much, yeah. Or it certainly doesn't help the equipment. Anyway, once again, if you want help from Mr. Whitham here, where do you go? You go to georgethetech.com is my home on the web where you can book services by the minute, or by the 15 minute increment, or by the job, by the project. You know, I do the stacks and the racks. I do all that kind of stuff. And Dan, where do they find you, sir? They find me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, you can submit your audio in my specimen collection cup. It's easy to do. It's $25. We will see what your studio sounds like. Most of the time it's like, hey, it's okay. Or you get one with a manly and an Avalon and, you know, a shower curtain. And it just sounds pretty weird. Well, since we haven't gotten any questions in, is there something that's come up with one of your clients recently that was kind of interesting? Or? Well, we, we had, I did get a good question, and I actually had to help somebody with this week. Somebody was wondering about how to edit video. So a client was sending her video, yeah, and she wanted to be able to edit. It, it was like no timings or anything, but had to sync up with an existing voice track in another language. Oh, wow. And okay. how do you do that? Was she well, dubbing a language? She was dubbing a language, and it's like, how do you sync it perfectly? But depending on the language, it can be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Adobe Audition is real simple. All you mm-hmm. do is take the video and the audio that they send you, throw it into a multi-track, 
in there. I throw the video in one track and the audio will be in another. Do you just literally drag the video into a track into and a Adobe goes, oh, that's a video? video and, just and, 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 and the little window opens in the lower mm -hmm. left-hand corner and there's the video and you can scroll along and you can sync up you know, what you're saying to fit what's going on on the screen. And it's actually pretty cool. That's and, that's cool. Yeah. They've made, they've made it so much easier. I mean, that used yeah. to be really the domain of Pro Tools and some of those kinds of softwares, but to be able to do that so easily in Adobe Audition. I mean, it really was software designed to do audio for picture. That really what it was designed it, to be. A, it was designed for voiceover, really. Yeah, it's a companion for Premiere. Premiere you yeah. know, and when and when the going gets tough in Premiere and you need to do more audio production work, that's when Adobe Audition comes into play. Right. Um, I just saw something pop up in the chat room from Fred. Hey, Fred. Fred, <laughs> Fred by the way, Fred let us know about the audio mix not being so great between live and playback. Hopefully tonight we got it right. Let us know. Um, do you uh, do computer monitors count as hard surfaces? Eh, I guess if they're pretty big. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're oh, solid oh, glass. You're talking about displays, like yeah, yeah, computer displays. Uh, yes, they absolutely do. Like if you have, uh, he's got two in his booth. If you've got two monitors sitting right in front of you, splayed in a way that the sound bounces off that surface and comes right back at the mic yes yeah but if you have them angled a bit you, you want to angle them in such a way that the sound bounces and goes away from your mic right that could be angled up down in out whatever it is you want to avoid the bank shot so that's not usually too difficult of a problem to solve i find just okay. a small adjustment of the monitor's angle that usually gets rid of those reflections right but we have to hear it yeah, you know, it's because we know what it's supposed to sound like. All right. Yeah, I'm just seeing if there's anything else to follow up on that. Um, no one from one from Gerard before we, we'll do this one from Gerard and okay. we'll get to Adam. Our yes. guest has been very patient. Um, regarding the AG03, does a preamp bypass the AG03 preamp? So I guess what he's saying is, if you plug an external preamp right. into the input on the AG03, does it bypass? The internal preamp. I don't know the answer to that. Generally, that that's a no. You almost always on these products, you're still going through the preamp. You just turn the gain way, way, we way did, down yeah. or pad. And Which is why you're using that preamp <clears throat> in the first place when the preamp in the AG03 is just dandy. I guess you could go into line two of the AG03, which is a line input. Right. That doesn't have. Yeah. And then you eh. then you can run the thing in mixer mode and. That way Skype will hear your input, you know, that kind of stuff if you really want to be a purist. But, you know, again, if you can't hear the difference, who cares? Right. Listen to the sound and go by the judgment of that, the sound. All right. Enough of this. You <sighs> know this is what people tune in for. Because when Dan and George talk voiceover technology, you all listen intently. Apparently. Even I do. Uh, okay. Adam Verter is standing by. We'll be right there with him to talk about all the cool stuff that he's up to. and uh, But we'll be right back after this message from Source Elements and various other people. This is the Latin Lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, it's my turn to talk about Source Elements. You guys know, you've been listening to the show for a while, how great their tools uh, for broadcast recording, remote and remote sound recording and streaming are. The tool to get these days, even more now than ever, as ISDN fades to black, is definitely Source Connect. It is the one that overall is most commonly found in professional studios around the globe. So you should probably be familiar with it and at least have a demo. And you can get a 14-day free trial working demo of Source Connect. These uh, right from source-elements.com. It's absolutely a no-brainer to get this. It runs on Windows and Mac. Um, it's become very stable. And nice thing about it is you don't have to have a little iLock plug-in USB thing. All you have to do is have a free iLock account to use it. So... Go set it up. Go get it working. Get familiar with it. If you have trouble, they do have support. If you have a special case in your studio, Dan or I can help you as well. Get it dialed into your studio's needs and uh, get, to, get to work. You'll be able to access the best studios in the world with Source Connect. Thanks a lot for your sponsorship. We really appreciate it. We'll be right back with Dan and Adam Werner right after this. 
Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. All right, let's talk about our guest before we actually put him on camera here. Adam Werner is an accomplished full-time voice talent and audiobook narrator with almost 400 titles to his name. He's been working professionally in the voiceover world in all genres since 2003, just like me, voicing thousands of TV and radio commercials, e-learning courses, and industrials. He holds an, a Master of Fine Arts, for those of you wondering what an MFA is, uh, in acting from the Chicago College of Performing Arts at Roosevelt University, and he has a new site called Pronounceology, a dictionary tool for the audiobook and e-learning industry. We'll talk about his career and tips for a long-term voiceover success and this new website and all sorts of cool stuff, and let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Joining us from Fort Collins, Colorado, Adam Werner. Adam, welcome hello. to the show. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me, guys. All right. Now, that's a great sounding booth. You know, <laughs> sometimes these people are like they're out in their living room. They're voice actors. Come on, get in your booth and talk to us for, over your mic. Let's see what your sound chain sounds like. It should be good and simple. What is your sound chain, by the way? Um, I've had pretty much the same thing since I went to full-time voiceover back in 2009 or so, which is... Uh, an AT4050 microphone up here, which actually I bought used at the time. It's almost 10 years old now, Great and it's mic. been rock solid ever since, yeah. yeah. Um, I have a Symmetrix 528E, a uh, little vocal processor strip, um, but the only thing, it has a bunch of bells and whistles, but the only thing I really use on that is the downward expansion. Um, and then the interface is an RME Fireface 400. Right. Which, again, has a lot of bells and whistles, but it's just converting the signal, basically, for me. <laughs> but if you needed it, you have it. It's a rock-solid, reliable piece of gear. That's, right. That's the, the key most thing. important part. Mm -hmm. So where are you from originally? Um, originally, I grew up in Illinois, a uh, small town called Dixon, uh, Illinois, about two and a half hours west of The home of, of Dave Quivasi, I believe. I don't think He's so. from Dixon, Illinois. No. Yeah. We and, as as is Ronald Reagan, this. I believe. Ronald Reagan, yeah. Well, so is Dave Quavassier. Dave is more famous than Ronald Reagan. so Absolutely. At least, <laughs> at least in Las Vegas. Huh. So you're from Dixon, Illinois. Cool. This yep, man yep. remembers things like that. I, I, I don't remember what I had I for just, breakfast. I just but, believe you know. him. Oh, my gosh. I need to talk to Dave about that. Anyway, small <laughs> town. Grew up there um, uh, most of my life. Uh, bounced around a little bit. And then ended up shortly after undergrad in Chicago. So I spent a good 15 years in Chicago. Yeah, and which that's is, that's that, which is also a, gr a great uh, a great town. And you you took theater mm -hmm. there and uh, that yep. sort of stuff. Yeah, I was pursuing stage theater mo mostly. Uh, that's kind of what my undergraduate training was in, and doing plays nonstop because the theater scene there is is awesome. Um, started doing voiceover though pretty quickly because as an actor in Chicago, you know, you do everything, and I was like, oh, uh, commercials, um, you know, film, indie film. TV commercials and voiceover. I'm going to try everything. And the voiceover, it runs in my family a little bit. My parents, well, my grandparents met on the stage doing theater. My parents met doing theater. Uh, and then my dad was a disc jockey and voice actor. Um, he's no longer with us, but he did that for many, many, many years. So that's kind of in my background. Right. Um, so, so when someone introduced you to voiceover, you knew exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. I do. But he used to send me, this is why I ended up in audiobooks so much. I grew up without TV mainly, and he would send me, because at the time, uh, my parents were separated. So he lived in California while we were in Illinois. 
and he would send me uh, recordings of himself on his circa, you know, 1983 home studio. Um, he would send me cassette tapes of him reading kids' books and those like golden books that they had back in the day. Oh, cool. Yeah. Things like that. So I grew up listening to his audiobooks, really. That was my, one of my main sources of entertainment. That, that's um, great. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good thing to have. Uh, so what brought you out to Colorado? Oh, everyone always asks that. All right, then I'll well, skip over yeah. that. And, you know. No, it's a, it's a simple question. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I started doing voiceover full-time in Chicago and put theater on the back burner a little bit and really loved it. And then I met my wife. And, you know, living in the city of Chicago in any urban center is hard with little kids. And we knew we wanted to have more than one. And then my wife's parents retired and they lived in Florida, Tampa, and they decided they were going to buy a house in the middle of the mountains in Colorado. So we kind of like dared each other to move out here. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we would have moved out here with zero family out here, but they moved out here. We moved out here. Um, we love Fort Collins. Uh, we didn't want to live in Denver right away because, again, it's a big urban center and we're kind of done with that for now. Um, but Fort Collins is a good mix. It's got a couple of good theaters. I've done a few plays out here with a, uh, great local groups of people. Um, I have an agent, voiceover agent in Denver. That's great. So, um, I've actually, my work and income has increased since moving out here, strangely, because I've had way more time and I have no commute, you know, in Chicago, uh, we can talk about my studio here, but in Chicago, there's no quiet place to record. I had to rent a tiny little office, a 45 minute commute from my apartment in Chicago that just to find a place that was quiet enough to record in and had the extra overhead of having a whole separate office and separate stuff there. So, right. um, yeah, it's been an interesting transition. I mean, you could have been right along Milwaukee there with the L going by. I, uh, yeah, like, how can someone live there with a train rolling by their bathroom like that? It's... That that was me. My apartment in Chicago that we still own, our condo, was right off the Red Line Thorndale stop. For those of you <laughs> in Chicago, I could you know open our my front window and it was literally <laughs> no baby right there. So it was a great location city wise, but right. recording wise, it was impossible. Right. So you've been doing this since 2003, and we've seen the business change immensely in that period of time. But when you and I got into the business, you know, we weren't the only ones, but we were the only ones. There weren't these thousands and thousands of people doing it. What were some of the first jobs you did? Oh, yeah. Well, this will sound familiar to anyone before the kind of Internet digital transformation. But, you know, in Chicago, I got a couple voiceover agents in Chicago, and I was pretty much always going into their, either the agent's office to audition. Uh, so training around the city on these trains for hours a day for a five minute audition, um, or going to a casting director's office or the actual client's office if they had a little voiceover setup of their own for some of the bigger like media companies. But just traveling, which is great to some degree, you get to see a lot more people traveling over the city and auditioning. And then every job I got was in an actual big studio in Chicago. Um, some of the big ones that if you, no, the area are still there. It's a lot of the big ones. Um, so my very first paid voiceover job was for a Harley Davidson dealership. All right. <laughs> um, which I still have a copy of. Yep. Yep. Um, the first job I got through an agent, it was great because it was one of those beginner's luck thing because it was a national non-union, but national, what was it? CLR, that cleaning liquid. Do you know? Oh, that? yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Calcium, lime, blah, blah, blah. Com like, Yeah, scum removal. Yeah, yep, yep. scale. It was for that, and it was for two, you know, thirty-second national spots. It was like three or four grand, you know, and it was like a thirty-minute session. And I was like, this was like the month after I made my demo and got my first agent. And I was like, great, this, this is easy. I just oh, have to get yeah, one. Man. Month, be yeah. You got a taste. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's never happened again. But uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, the first couple of years, because especially because I was pursuing theater, didn't have my own home set up. Not a lot of us did at the time. Um, it was all through agents and all through local studios. And it wasn't until I went to grad school in downtown Chicago there from 2006 to 2009. Again, very theater focused. We had some on-camera stuff. Um, but I was able to still do voiceover in the cracks and stuff like that during grad school. I uh, graduated in 2009, you know, in May or so. And that summer I was like, I got to jump in and do this full time because I don't want to go looking for some day job now, you know, that I have no interest in. Right. So, um, so what kind of work are you doing now since, you know, over the last 10 years? Um, for the last 10 years, since I've been full-time or so, it's, it's slowly growing more and more to the audiobook industry. 
which I'm pretty happy with because that's, like I said, I grew up reading books nonstop. And I've, since, a, since I was a little kid, I was like, how can I make a living reading books? Is this possible? And uh -huh. um, uh, I'm doing it, you know? And so, you know, this, this year, for example, audiobooks are probably 70% of my income, but 90% of my, 95% of my time because they're time consuming. Um, I still do a lot of TV and radio commercials, you know, not quite as many, especially because I'm not in Chicago anymore. I'm not in quite as large a market, <clears throat> um, but I still do a lot of um, e-learning, a lot of web videos. Like, so if like audiobooks are 70% of my business, it's probably 10% commercials and 10% e-learning and 10% various web things and industrials and stuff like that. Um, not as much the, through agents anymore. I've kind of stepped back from the kind of all out pursuing of the top shelf agent, you know, national commercial stuff, just because again, auditioning for that world can be so time consuming right. um, and playing that game and playing that lottery. And you have to, I think you have to really love it to some extent to really spend the time on it. Um, and for this stage of my life with, we have three little kids, two, four, and six, which are amazing and super it, cute. It gets better. Trust me. It, it, they're also very loud. Um, <laughs> and you know, my, my emotional energy to pour into the audition game um, at this stage of my life is a little less. I have a feeling when the kids are older, you know, I'll be like, ah, I'm going to redo my demos, you know, take some more training out in LA and enter that world a little more down the line. Right. Um, but at this stage, I'm content to really grow the audiobook side of my business because that's where my true passion All right. lies. If you're just joining us, you've missed a whole lot already. But we have plenty of time here with Adam Werner is joining us from... Uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, and he is a very successful voice actor and has been doing it consistently mm. at least since 2009, which is 10 years. That's right. On, yeah, on about. these hands, anyway. Uh, if you've got a question for Adam about, uh, uh, you know, obviously he knows an awful lot about audiobooks and uh, those sorts of things, throw it in the chat room. I know Jack Daniel is out there somewhere. He's in there now. I see him in the chat. Right? Yeah, and he will relay those questions to us. So just go nice. in there and, and ask those questions. Um, how long? How have you been able to maintain it over ten years? I mean, you were just 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 saying that you know you're you're kind of tiring of the auditions. How have you been able to keep it going? Obviously, having a lot of different clients and people who rely on you, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've heard people talk about that. I mean. For me, and I think this comes in handy being a, any of us that are full-time freelance type people. Um, and my wife, my wife says I'm very disciplined. I, you know, I. Uh, so it's very important for me to work a nine to five. And when I was before I was married to have little kids, I would work more than that because I because I love the work and it didn't feel like work. But um, you know, now that we're married and have three little kids, I'm very I stick to a nine to five. I don't work on the nights or weekends unless there's you know some crazy time zone client thing where they need to record um, at 7 p.m. or something. Right. Uh, but I really stick to that eight hour work week. I work every minute I'm in here. I don't spend a lot of time on social media. For me, when I first got started, it was the marketing. I mean, I had my previous day job, aka what I fell into and did to make money while I was pursuing theater in Chicago, was working for search, op uh, search engine optimization firms and website design firms doing internet marketing. Um, so I kind of learned that and I don't have a, you know, I didn't have a degree in that or anything, but I did that for a lot of online websites. And I learned a lot of those techniques early on back when they still worked back in the day um, when SEO was first getting started. So when I first put up my website and started getting active, you know, I was very successful online uh, at first, maybe because of that. Um, so I put a lot of time, you know, when I first went full time and I didn't have so many clients, I'd spend six hours a day on the phone, just calling up new clients calling up new e-learning companies, calling up media companies and ad agencies and you name it. Um, now, because I'm so busy with audiobooks, I don't have that time. So I've got a part-time marketing assistant and that's all she does is cold call for me. She works through lists of companies. She's cold calling. She's also following up with emails, um, tying into my CRM and doing monthly email campaigns through MailChimp. And I'm able to outsource all that stuff right now, which is great because I just, I just don't have time for it. No, um, and, and that's stuff that, you know, to do that when you're starting out, you really had to do it yourself. But if you've got to maintain yeah. a business and it's stuff that's not making, you know, that's taking you away from making money, better to have somebody else do it who's going to be totally dedicated to that and not, 
have to worry about, I got to get this audition out or I've got to get this project out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been a great, I mean, that's been a couple of years now and it's really paid off. It's, a, it's been a more of a slow build, but my email campaigns every month now are sending out to three to 4,000 different potential clients, current clients, you know, leads, things like that. Right. Um, so what are you using yeah. for your emailing system? Uh, right now it's just MailChimp, mm -hmm. which a lot of us use, but I like it cause it's simple. It's, you know, they, they have great products. It hooks into my CRM, which is called capsule, ah. which is, it's not a super well-known one, but I, I spent a lot of time looking at different CRM solutions years ago when I chose one. And I like capsule because it's cheap right now. I'm paying 12 bucks a month, I think. And it's, um, it's very lean and, and simple. It's not like Salesforce or some of these crazy ones that have so many bells and whistles that you get lost. Um, it's really just a, just what I need it, and it will sync up with Mailchimp. You know, record all my email activity in the CRM with the client, stuff like that. And there's other ones that do that too. I looked it up. It's Capsule C A P S U L E C R M dot com. Yep. Cool. I'll all look right. at that. That finding a CRM system it, it can become. <sighs> I have spent, I spent so much time looking for the right system that the time that the system was designed to save was eaten up by the time it took me to find the system. So it took, for, I mean, I settled on one myself, uh, last fall and you know, once you settle in with something, you start finding little things that are wrong with it, but you realize that, you know what is, I still have something that works for most things and you just kind of soldier forward. <laughs> That's yeah, been my experience. When, once you get so invested in something, you know, it'd be hard, it'd be hard for me to change now because the amount of time it would take me or for me to pay someone to do to reformat labels and tags to have everyone labeled and tagged and organized yeah. the way I like, which it's all transferable because it's just raw data, but it's, it would take a lot of time to massage all that data. So I really would not want to do it. Right. Just, to, I won't get too down the rat hole with this rabbit hole, but yeah. what is one feature that it's really missing that you're like, ah, I'll work, I'll have to work you know, work around that is, or does it have everything you really need? Oh, let me see. I'm just going to bring it up here just so I can remind myself. Um, for my needs right now, it has everything I need. Cool. Because yeah, I'm, you know, it does pipelines. If you know what those are, yeah. um, it, a lot of these, you know, where it tracks, tracks potential clients through a sales process, but like, I don't use any of that stuff. Yeah. I know, um, uh, uh, Matt, does it, does it do the billing as well? Is it doing a billing side of things? It's it's not, and that's one gotcha. thing that. Um, but that's that's on me because right now I'm still I'm still using this incredibly complex yet customized Excel spreadsheet full of macros and formulas that I created to be very specific to my workflow, um, which I love because it's so customizable and it's free, um, unlike some of the online you know uh, options. But it's a spreadsheet. It doesn't. It's not going to interact with a CRM. Uh, so I did. I do wish I I had the ability that I had the ability to like automatically send invoice reminders. Some of them have that. Um, and and Capsule will sync up with uh, QuickBooks, I believe, and Zero and some. Uh, what's the other popular one? FreshBooks. I believe it will sync up with those two. Um, so down the line. It's, it's always on my That's list. That's another it's, project for another time. Is what right, that is. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Adam Werner uh, about all the stuff that he does to maintain his career. Again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room right now, whether it be in Facebook or in our main chat room, which is a lot of fun <laughs> and a weekly party every week. Uh, get it in there and we'll get to it in the next segment. We're going to talk about his new website right after these important messages. So we'll be right back in just a couple minutes. Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. What? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. 
Instagram. What's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. Hi, Harlan Hogan, and uh, we are unboxing our 2.0 version of the Voice Optimized Headphones. Brought these out uh, the original a couple of years ago. This is the latest edition. We've made a few evolutionary changes. Nothing revolutionary because, frankly, it's one of our, our most successful products. Inside the box. It's like a pop-up. It's automatic. Um, we have a couple of things. There's the brochure. Gives the specifications on the back. A uh, basic layout of the various features and the best way to use the headphones. There is a very nice, very tough vinyl bag. And that's lined with fleece, so it's good for traveling or just to keep your headphones handy at home, keep them away from dust or accidental spills or whatever happens around your house like mine. Inside are the headphones themselves. One of the things, if you are familiar with the first product, you might notice is where's the cable? That is located inside here. And two things. One, we have stayed with a very popular feature we introduced, which is a a combination straight and coily cord. I like the coily cord because it stretches out, less chance of pulling the wires out of the headphones, but I never liked it hanging next to my face. So here you have just a straight cord combined with that. The change to the cord is you have this. Your standard quarter inch for professional gear. Inside of that is a mini. If you're working with, uh, say, an iPhone or a mixer face, for example, you would use a mini. And then there's a mini on this end. And that goes into this jack. Much more efficient and much less likely that you could pull that out. Uh, it does happen pretty frequently with headphones. You step on a cord, boom, and now you've got a soldering job. So that really works well. Two things that we did uh, to improve the product based on feedback was to increase the thickness of the headband. It's still covered in, in Nappa leather. Same thing with the, the ear cups. Those are leather as well. And we did make a minor adjustment to the audio, very, very minor. Removed a little bit of the bass and improved the mid-range frequency. And uh, the sound is terrific. What you need in headphones for voice work is truth. You want to hear exactly what the room sounds like and what you sound like. And that's what these do very well, and that's why they're optimized for voice work. So that's it. The VOHP headphones 2.0. You can find these on voiceoveressentials.com or amazon.com. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. All right, we're back with Adam Werner, and, uh, you know, you, one of the things that happens when you, you do a lot of voiceover work is you're like, i got to find something else to do, too. Or you find it, you have an interest to help other voice actors. You know, I just helped start an entire international organization. But that was, <laughs> you know, that was, that was just, you know, my part-time stuff. What were you thinking? Man? I God, I'm still <laughs> wondering about that one. Uh, but you've got a new, uh, a new web tool that you've put together called Pronounceology to help all us voice actors. What's involved in that and how can it help people? Very good question, Dan. I'm glad you asked. Um, well, it's, um, it came out of my own frustration and it came out of my own need, basically. Um, it's intended right now, at least for the audiobook world, but also has a lot of application in the e-learning world. If you both voice a lot of e-learning. Um, the basic problem that I wanted to solve was if you get an audiobook that has a lot of search terms you need to look up, uh, those of you who do a lot of audiobooks know that not all publishers are not in all, not in all instances, are you paid for your research time? If you're lucky, the publisher will do the research for you, but you're not always lucky. A lot of times you have to do it yourself and you're not paid for that research time sometimes unless it's excessive. So you'd get an audio book and it's like, you know, the history of medical technology of ancient Sanskrit people in the Indus Valley or whatever. <laughs> and there's like just tons and hundreds of terms to look up and you're, and I would spend, cause I'm very, try to be very thorough with it. I would spend hours and hours and sometimes like three full work days researching things before I could even start recording. Um, 
things like that. And in the e-learning realm, you get a Word document or an e-learning script from a client and there's all sorts of medical jargon or technical jargon. It, again, if you're lucky, they've put in phonetic spellings for you on how to pronounce it. Um, but a lot of the time, they don't even know how to pronounce it. They're just cut and pasting from a subject matter expert who they don't even know where they went anymore, or they've just always ever typed them. They don't know how to pronounce it. So um, there's all this research we have to do for pronunciation. Uh, and Merriam-Webster.com, dictionary.com, uh, Oxford English Dictionary, all these dictionaries have an online website. You just go type in the word, you boom, you got it. But I just got tired of doing that, you know, cut and pasting 300 times and then cut and pasting the phonetic spelling back into my script or back into wherever. And I'm like, all of these dictionaries have APIs, which for those of you who don't know, stands for Application Program Interface, which is just a way to access all that database, access the content of a dictionary straight from the back end for a programmer. And I'm not a programmer by any means, but I know just enough about it to know that it's possible to do this automatically in bulk. And I searched and I searched and I searched and strangely, no tool, and as far as I know, still no tool out there exists to allow you to do a bulk lookup of a dictionary. It doesn't exist. I'm like, that's silly. And I, for a couple of years, I thought about it and I even brainstormed some things. I'm like, oh, somebody really needs to build this. And eventually I'm like, ah, well, nobody's building it. I guess that someone will be me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and what does what kind of stuff does that involve creating a website uh, like that? I, well, on my end, it's just the brainstorming part. I had to go find, you know, a programmer or two who have the knowledge to actually do this. Um, that is not my... <laughs> uh, that is not trivial. It is not. And I, you know, I've been through uh, two programmers now. Both were great. But, you know, the first guy had his fourth or fifth kid and got busy and is like, I'm too busy, you know, and he has a full time cybersecurity job. This was just a side gig for him because um, uh, programming is expensive and it's been an expensive project. But the basic idea is for to take the audiobook realm as a as an example uh if you're a member it's a subscription base right now for pronunciology uh if you're highlighting your pdf and i annotate or acrobat or whatever program of choice you want to highlight a pdf in or whatever device you want most of us generally highlight the terms as we go so you end up with a pdf with like 300 terms say highlighted uh you just sign into pronunciology you upload the pdf it sucks out all your highlighted terms runs them through a sequence of uh, six databases, finds the most authoritative result, spits you back out a report with the word, the phonetic spelling, and you can play the audio or delete that and record your own audio, add your notes, um, search other sites. It's like a home base for research and it does it all automatically, instantaneously, because it's code, it's programming. Um, and then at the end of all your research, you can share that report with the publisher. You can create a shareable, you know, a viewable shareable version of it. Um, you can print it out, you can export it to a spreadsheet, or you can export, export just the phonetic spellings back to your PDF, which as a narrator, they're, they're right there on the page they came from spelled phonetically. Um, Word documents too, uh, we just enabled that feature. If you got e-learning, most, most of that tends to come in Word documents. You can highlight words, upload it, sucks out the terms, searches all the stuff, gives you full report of all the words. So my days of cut and pasting 300 times back and forth and back and forth to a dictionary. Thank the Lord are over. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and I think for, for an audiobook narrator, that's going to be pretty important. But uh, what about something like medical narration when you've got to say things like ankylosing spondylitis and get that right? Yep. Yeah. One of the databases we use is um, Merriam Webster medical um, database. So yeah, I had an audiobook recently that was um, about mental health. And so there was just full of drug names, you know, trimethylene, doxylene for various mental health illness, um, all, stuff, all stuff like that. And it just found the vast majority of it automatically. If it exists in a dictionary, it'll grab it. Um, it also searches things like Youglish, which if you don't know that is a great way to search YouTube by searching the um, closed caption texts part of YouTube. So you can, it'll bring you right to the place in YouTube where somebody says that obscure river in Kansas, you know, that no one knows how to pronounce because it's not in a dictionary, um, but oftentimes they're on YouTube. Um, wow. Yeah. Things Amazing. like that. Yeah. So, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I have a lot of plans of dictionaries to add things like that. Um, and I think it has a lot of potential for the ESL world, which is a whole nother industry to look at, but anyone that needs to learn English, it's a good bulk way to get, you know, assignments, things like that. Absolutely. So. Once again, we're talking with Adam Werner. Still time to get a question in if you want. Uh, and we've been talking about uh, the new website. So just 
pronounceology.com. Yep, the word pronounce, pronounce, and then ology. So like this ology is Greek for, you know, the, the study of. So the study of pronunciation, pronounce, ology. Not and pronunciology, though. Not yet. <laughs> and if you stick around, I believe, toward the end of this, um, right now we're running on a subscription model for, you know, roughly 14 bucks a month. You get access to what you need. Um, we may add different tiers to that later, but that's probably all you need. Uh, and if you stick around, we'll throw up a coupon code and we'll give you at least a free month for anybody that is listening and wants to try it out. Um, you know, we're still, we just launched in July, I believe. Yeah. We launched in July. So we're still gaining users and gaining traction and it's just me running it. So if people want to try things out, you know, we're not, we don't, it's not like we have, you know, tens of thousands of users that I can't let people try things for free or I'm really interested in feedback and, and adding features that will make it work for your, your workflow. Excellent. Like All right. You ready for a few questions from everybody else watching this thing live? Yes, please. Mr. <laughs> Whittem. All right. Let's go find the first one from T-Man. T-Man's one of our regulars in our chat room. Hmm. Um, do you absorb or remember the books you work on as if you were reading them for the for pleasure? So, like, how much do you think you retain after finishing a book? That's a, that's a very interesting question. I don't think anyone has ever asked me that. It so is, actually. Yeah. 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 Um, I think I retain pretty well because again, I grew up, I was just one of those kids that, you know, I'd read a 500 page book every two days growing up. Um, or, you know, I just read, 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 read. So I read very, very fast, which means I have to, especially when I was first getting started, having to remind myself to slow down while narrating because my brain is always ahead of my, the words on the page. Um, but I have to read every book at least twice that I record. For work so reading I fast to, is, a, is an asset then. it is that's true it is an asset in that way um but i have to prep a book i have to read through a book you know highlight all the words like i was just talking about um if it's fiction i have to i i do various annotations with characters and think about character voices so i have to read through it once before i record it and then i sit down and record it at like real speed read narration speed in books i read for pleasure i only read once um so i, I think i actually retain them better my wife makes fun of me because she calls me she says i know a lot about i know a little bit a about little bit a lot, about a lot, about a lot of stuff lot of yeah. i know what that yeah. means <laughs> yeah because you know i'll narrate a, i i'm just now starting to narrate a book about the history of monasticism and ancient buddhism um which is just very specific um, so, so when and, are you going to go on jeopardy oh the, yeah. <laughs> i just have these glaring gaps like pop culture <laughs> and uh and sports like i've narrated a few f football books but um yeah you know they have some glaring gaps but like <laughs> certain categories i could probably do well at. yeah but that's a good question i'd say i retain them better Thanks for um, the question. yeah i had another part to that what setup do you have for clients that want to direct you or using like a skype or a zoom what do you use if when that happens well many many years ago in chicago when i was there uh, the amazing George Whittem helped me set up a virtual Skype phone patch, which I still to this day do not understand uh, in terms of how, how the so I don't cabling, use it. <laughs> uh, in terms of how the cabling works, I don't get it. I just have my original notes from gosh eight years ago, and every time I boot my studio, I plug in the cables in the exact way. All I have to say, I use Skype as a virtual phone patch, um, and I have a Skype phone number. So oftentimes I just give them a phone number. They never even know that it's on Skype um, or they'll want to use Skype, but people can conference call in, they can direct me and hear playback, which, what's my, which is kind of what makes it a true phone patch that they can hear playback through um, Adobe Audition, which I use. Um, I use that a lot. I also have Source Connect. I use that now and then. I've, I never ended up getting ISDN. I even had bought a box at one point, Tello Zephyr, um, and had it sitting ready to go. But in Chicago, at least, and this was years ago, and now it's even worse. You know, it's like five, six hundred dollars a month now. Is that true? Yeah, but or it's more. Hundreds, hundreds of dollars a month for an ISDN line. And when you're not really pursuing the commercial world, like I'm not at this point, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's cheaper out here in Colorado, but it's still, yeah, I, yeah. it doesn't make a lot of sense for me right now to get a true ISDN line. I've done bridges with Source Connect now, with IP, IP DTL. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't have a current, like, full active IP DTL account. Mm -hmm. um I'll, I'll get one at the drop of a hat if i ever need to again because i love the the product yeah um but for now source connect and kind of a 
virtual phone patch have been totally good for my needs. Cool. All right. Well, it's time for this yeah. week's Jack Attack, 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 Attack. Uh, Jack Daniel asks, Adam, I'm thinking about a studio bricks as pretty as yours. Maybe it's uh, just because you're in it. Uh, do you feel it's been a good investment for you? I would think that as an audiobook narrator, sustained environmental quality is critical to you in a way that is not for people like me who work in shorter forms. Um, good question. <clears throat> You're right. Uh, us audiobook narrators who spend, you know, eight hours a day in our booth, it is, it's a difference. It's a need set. I was going to say skill set, but a need set. Is that a word? I'm making up the word need set. That works. Put it um, in pronounceology. Make sure you get it. Right. Yeah, there we go. Um, it is different. So my first booth in Chicago was a four by four or four by six. It was a four by six with single walled whisper room. And that was okay. Um, it was a little claustrophobic. This is a five by five uh, Studio Bricks Pro. So it's kind of kind of triple wall ish, two and a half triple wall. Um, it was, you know, stupid expensive like they are. Um, but when we were moving out here to Colorado, we didn't know what situation we were going to be in. We didn't know exactly what house we were going to be in. Um, so that's when I bought this. So that was three years ago now, because I just wanted the biggest, thickest beast I could get to kind of, and also because Studio Bricks pieces are a little more modular. I knew that there was more, there's going to be better capability to like carry them upstairs or down crazy basement stairs or something. Some of the other ones out there um, have bigger wall pieces and I've, I've heard in the past heard horror stories of people buying one and not being able to get it into the space that they need. So for all those reasons, I got the studio bricks and it's been great. Uh, the air unit, like I couldn't, I, in the past, I was not able to run the ventilation unit on that old whisper room while recording for audiobooks. I should say for audiobooks because the audiobook publishers, especially are very picky. They don't want, they don't want it. They don't want a gate. They don't allow, they don't let you quote unquote, they don't want you. They tell you not to use a gate or anything. They want raw audio. Um, you know, I know people who do short form primarily, they can run something in the background and just gate it out or find, find ways to reduce it. Um, but the little air exchanger unit in this studio bricks, I have it on a kind of a low setting and it brings in fresh air silently enough. I, I can barely hear it with my ear, but it doesn't really pick up on the mic. Um, and I hear in, mo in more recent, even newer versions of the studio bricks that they've gotten even better. Um, this one's great. So uh, this might be a good place, unless there's other questions, George, to talk about the studio build, do you think? Yeah, we, we can do that. We got, a, we got a couple more, but this is the topic we're on right now. I mean, okay. so yeah, we, you, you, you were prepared for whatever comes when you got that booth, but you wanted to put it in the garage and you have a three bay garage. Yeah. So when we bought our, uh, for the first two years we were in Colorado, we were renting and I had to put the studio bricks in the, a basement room, regular mm -hmm. basement room, which was under the kitchen yeah. of our house. Mm -hmm. And my wife at the time was a stay at home mom with two and then three little kids. And you can imagine it was a nightmare. She Foot said traffic. she still has, yeah, she still has PTSD from me, you know, texting <laughs> her like she could not go in the kitchen all day long while I was recording. Mm -hmm. which is a nightmare as you can imagine um so when we bought our house we looked for a specific kind of setup and we found a house that has a three-car garage and the third bay sticks out from the house a little bit so there's no there's a little attic space over it, but there's no rooms above this third bay of the garage and i thought perfect we'll turn this garage space into um my studio um and i toyed with just kind of walling it off myself quickly and easily first but then ended up not doing that. So I hired George here to design this studio enclosure for me. So we built a full, you know, double drywall on the outside and insulation and double drywall on the inside, tore out the existing drywall and made this roughly 10 by 20 garage bay space. So it's kind of long and narrow into a office soundproof ish office. Um, and then I put my studio bricks pro inside of that. So in theory, I'm behind like eight walls. You, and not just a regular wall, eight soundproof walls. You think it would be? <laughs> you think it'd be perfect? Um, but as George was hinting at, the I, man, stopping any stopping any kind of above room foot traffic is just impossible. It's just impossible. Um, the only thing that gets through from the outside, or is if we have a really low frying chopper for some reason that flies overhead. Um, if the garbage truck stops out right outside my 
you know, fake garage door here, but that's once a week, early morning. And I know exactly when it is and I can plan around it. Um, that's about it. But my kids, God bless them. Um, if they're in their bedroom, which is not even above me, it's in the middle of the house ish. So 30 feet away and not above me. If they're up there, walking is okay. But if they're at all running or not even just jumping, just running or like they like to do jumping off the top bunk bed, <laughs> um, then yeah, it, it, that vibration, that structural vibration is just transmitted and comes right through and you can see it on the waveform just boom, boom, boom. Um, that being said, it's way better than the old house. Um, and they're, you know, it's their bedroom. So they're not really playing in there a lot. And if I have one of these live sessions, like via source connect or phone patch, I just tell my wife, Hey, keep the kids out of that bedroom, just mm -hmm. that bedroom from three to four. And we're fine. Mm -hmm. We just communicate about it. And it's been, it's been awesome overall. You should get the Harlan Hogan led sign and say, make the yellow for that and hang it downstairs somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure there's right. all sorts of incentives you could come up with if you had to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's only going to get better because they're young now. Our oldest just started kindergarten, but they're all going to be in school eventually. You know, it's yeah. only going to get better. This is the worst time in terms of toddlerhood. Sure. But their feet get bigger. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, or they Jenna, become uh, yeah. Jenna asks, what's your favorite genre to record and why? Um, Probably good question. Easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love fiction because of my acting background that's the most acting like for me um i grew up being a total sci-fi nerd so when i get the chance to narrate sci-fi or fantasy good sci-fi or fantasy that's like you know that's my dream come true um also on the other realm i love reading kind of geeky non-fiction natural history or scientific stuff for the layperson not super technical um for example, a book I recorded last year was called The Ends of the World, A History of Earth's Mass Extinctions. And it was very relatable, written for the layperson, but about, you know, prehistory and the different mass extinctions and that kind of geeky nonfiction stuff. Um, I don't get to do it that often, but again, when I do, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Um, these days, in the last two years, for whatever reason, I'm getting cast and recording a lot of thrillers, a lot of spy international thriller assassin type stuff which is fun it's a lot of fun because that genre is it's very fast action very you know sometimes over the top but it's, it's a lot of fun oh that's good yeah all right we got another one coming in this one's from uh, fred how do you deal with the low humidity in colorado mm -hmm. does it cause you vocal problems and um oh there's the second part that's not related so yeah i mean it it is very low i know i've spent a lot of time out there you adjust. Um, do you just stay hydrated? Do you need any technique? Um, I I haven't I have done a lot. When we first moved out here, I feel like my body has got acclimatized to it to some, yeah. to some degree. Because when we first moved out here, I had to sleep with a humidifier in our bedroom every night. Um, and I've kind of gotten out of that practice, but I haven't noticed a great difference. I, I use way more chapstick than I ever used to use. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, hydration. I mean, I feel like I was helped because even in Chicago, I was having to hydrate again, doing audiobooks, you talk all day long. So I was having to hydrate already a lot. So I already drink a lot of water and I've kept that up. Um, I have, I, I bought, you know, I bought a little mini humidifier for this office room. Um, I haven't plugged it in and started it yet because I'm wondering, this is a question for you, George. I was going to ask somebody about having a humidifier in your office does that I, I, I assume you don't want it near the equipment but you don't you know you don't want your humidity level too high with all this sensitive electronic equipment either right well i mean it's all yeah real and you don't want 100 percent humidity but i mean like 50 percent humidity is pretty nice okay because i have a little thermometer slash humid or whatever humid sensor in here and i think it's it's usually hovers around 40 percent humidity in here and it's probably because you're in a somewhat sealed off room right so your own you're creating your own humidity you know the room traps it in there from your own body it does trap some interesting smells in here <laughs> <laughs> we got one time for one more question here from sunny okay. james what editing software do you use for your e-learning project Good question. I, you know, I got started uh, back in early 2000s when I first got started was on Adobe Audition 1.5. Somebody just gave me a copy that they weren't using anymore. And 
mainly because of familiarity I've stuck with audition. Uh, I'm, I own CS six. I just hardly ever use it. Um, I haven't gone the CC route because I don't want to, um, you know, pay monthly for something that uh, whose bells and whistles I rarely use. Um, so re- my mainstay right now is a, a Adobe Audition 3.0, and it's been that for years because it does everything I need for e-learning specifically. Because I'm a geek, I set up a whole bunch of keystroke macros to automate some some of the editing process. It's not a full word to wave replacement for those of you that know what that is. Um, but I can record in, I, I never record in multi-track mode. I just didn't learn that way. And it's weird for me. I just record in editing mode and I drop regions, marker regions, um, where I have a, a file in e-learning and it will name them automatically from my script based on a macro. That's what's slightly similar to word to wave So when you have these long e-learning scripts with like a thousand files and they're all a word dot MP3 or wave or, you know, sequence of random numbers, um, I can just name each of those marker regions in one file in audition. I save that one raw file when I'm all done, I can batch process out all of those files and then convert them at the same time. If I want into MP3s or whatever the client wants. Um, I, I usually run a modified version. If the client wants mastered audio, uh, again, years ago, 10 years ago. Now I pay George, to set up my audition stack so that I can uh, master audiobook files when I produce my own books through ACX. Um, so I, I modified that stack a little bit to, to kind of give a nice even level and, and volume and everything for e-learning files. So I, I run that often um, on the, but again, I, that's just one batch process. I just click a button and it zips through all the files. Um, I don't do a lot of crazy technical stuff on the e-learning. Um, I don't do a lot of breath reduction, if at all, because I think partly through the audiobook work, I've just learned to be a really silent breather Um, because most audiobook publishers don't do a lot of breath reduction. They just like you to be a silent breather um, as much as possible. Which can be done, folks, believe it or not. It also helps to be in good physical condition to be able to do that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get used to it. Uh, There was one last question that Fred had here. It says, I've also done some World War II and World War II uh, one documentaries, would it help with the French location names, pronounceology? Um, it would possibly, um, this is the kind of the caveat or the tricky thing about pronounceology. It's, um, it's designed to get bulk things from a dictionary. So if it's in a dictionary, we're gold. Um, so your foreign word, how many foreign words are in a dictionary? If it's a world war two famous place, or a famous person, general, maybe. Most likely. Um, but for the book I just mentioned that I just started prepping on monasticism, there's about 300 search terms, most of which are ancient Sanskrit, Vedic, you know, and Jain and Greek things that are not in any dictionary anywhere. You have to, I'm going to have to track down an ancient Greek expert, you know? Um, those kind of things <laughs> are not in a dictionary. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of our databases that is in pronounceology is Forvo, F-O-R-V-O, which is a great place for pronunciations. And that has a lot of foreign stuff in it. And it has a lot of just random French words, um, place names, things like that. So when you have a script that's heavy with place names and foreign words, a lot of the results will come from Forvo. Yeah. Um, you have to be a little careful with Forvo because it's not a dictionary. It's not, people are not paid to put these entries in there. It is a crowdsourced endeavor. So um, oftentimes it's the only place you can find a term, in which case, great, use it. It's it's better than nothing or just making it up or winging it, Um, but it is crowdsourced. Now, one feature I didn't mention of pronounceology that may end up being the most valuable is our own, we have our own internal dictionary. So let's say you're doing a World War II book, you prepped a book and you have 500 crazy terms, 300 of which are found for you automatically, great. 200 of which you go research on your own. Every time a term is added or searched in pronounceology and then a custom source is added, it's added to our own pronounceology dictionary. Wow, so now, crowdsourced dictionary. It's like a wiki wow. of it, pronunciation. Yeah. pronunciation. It, is, it is like Forvo in that it's crowdsourced, but unlike Forvo, it is quality controlled because me oh. or, or down the line, someone I will hire goes and checks your source and says, oh, I, I agree with you. This YouTube pronunciation of this random German forest I agree with you. That's authoritative enough to include. I will standardize your phonetic spelling, record the audio if we need it. 
you know, things like that. So that there is a quality check. Yeah. Um, and over time, we've already got close to 500 words in that dictionary um, internally. And, the, and the, it's valuable because those are words that don't exist anywhere else. That's what, that's the very reason they got flagged to be put in there. They don't exist anywhere else. Right. So over time, as we gain more users, that's going to get thousands and thousands of, of entries and it may end up being the most valuable part of the, the website is our own internal database. All righty. Well, Adam, thanks so much for joining us tonight here on VoiceOver Body yeah. Shop and telling us about Pronounceology and all the cool stuff that you're doing. And uh, again, where can they find Pronounceology? Pretty simple. You can find Pronounceology at pronounceology.com. Uh, you can get a free month uh, coupon code. If we, don't, if we don't get it up on screen here, email me at adam at adamverner.com. Uh, you can check out the narration audiobook work at adamvernernarrator.com. That's an audiobook specific website. Um, and f I'd love to see all of you out in LA for the Sovas Awards next month. For those of you that are going, I'll see you guys there, right? Maybe. Yep. Maybe. All right. Great. Nice. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, Adam. All right. Thank you, guys. And thanks for all the questions, everybody. All right. We'll talk to you soon when you're here in LA. All right. All right. Well, George and I will be right back to wrap things up. More stuff like Salt Man coming up. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back. Here on Voiceover Body Shop, we got the coupon code for uh, getting Pronounceology. We do, and for especially for those listening on the podcast who wouldn't see this on the screen, uh, the coupon code is, and the case apparently counts here. So, lowercase Q, uppercase six, an uppercase six. <laughs> Just checking to make sure you're listening. <laughs> you're listening. Okay, okay. good. Uh, lowercase Q six. What I think think is an uppercase i but that's a tough one right when you have an i and a uh, and then it's seven could be an, a one um and an uppercase h a lowercase n uppercase q and a four so that's eight digits all told that's the coupon code code to get a free trial to get started up with pronunciology all righty well next week we got it oh. Big event coming up. Thanks, Mike. Mike put it on the lower third. Uh, all right. Good job. Keep it there. Um, next week on this show, Rosie and Brian and their daughter, Alyssa Amador, will be in my backyard here at the VoiceOver Body Shop doing a great concert. It's a live backyard concert. If you're here in L.A., we really want you to come down. It's 20 bucks. You can get tickets. Uh, you know, If you go to our website, there's a URL to get tickets. Just 20 bucks. Proceeds to help... Uh, uh, Puerto Rican hurricane relief, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, and it a is. technological marvel. Of course, another <laughs> technological miracle we're going to manage right here in the backyard. Right, in <laughs> my backyard, which is, and it's, we actually have a fair amount of room for this, so that's going to be great. So please join us next Monday night. If you can't be here, like if you're in Des Moines or uh, Moline or Buffalo or mm -hmm. Pittsburgh or one of those places, um, you can watch the show live. And it'll be in perfect sound. And if and what we could do, we thinking could. out loud, Dan. I'm thinking out loud. Go. We could anybody that donates during the show, right. during the concert, yes. we could as well contribute. Absolutely. We How will, about that? We will have a... Just a, ran that by him right now live on the air. No, we were going to do that anyway. That's a, well, I think that would be a fun way to contribute as well if you can't yeah. be here. Right. So we'll, we'll have a line <laughs> open. You there need, it goes again. You need an antihistamine. There it is. All righty. Uh, that's next week. And I know... <laughs> 
Jonathan Tilly will be coming up in a couple of weeks uh, talking about uh, marketing, and he's got some great stuff about Instagram. Who are our donors of the week? Well, let me take another cough, and I'll let you know. All right. Da, 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 da. Yeah, there is something in there. Um, well, we just got one from a new name that I hadn't seen before. A nice contribution from Donald D- Dean. Thanks, Donald. Yeah, thank you, sir. Moving on, we got our, our weekly contribution from Tracy Reynolds. Thanks, Tracy. Um, Andrew Kaufman as well donates regularly. Eric Aragoni, another one of those regulars. Um, Shana Pennington Baird as well, sustaining uh, donor that donates every week or month. Antland Productions, good old Uncle Roy. Uh, Joseph Valentinetti, uh, monthly donor. Um, Stephanie Sutherland. And Diana Birdsall. Thank you, Diana. Yeah. It was a big help with uh, getting uh, 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 Jonathan Tillion. Oh, week. great, so, great. So Patty we're... Gibbons. And let's see if I've looped. I have looped. So that's the end of we the queue looped. since last week. We appreciate it. It helps us make this show technologically perfect. If you've noticed, it looks like a TV show now, not like a webcast. It's come a long way. It has. It has. And that's thanks to you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, of course, you know, if you need help with your home studio, you can find George at <clears throat> George, the tech, George, the dot tech works as well for those that like the short URLs and Dan's right over at another website called homevoiceoverstudio.com. See the technological stuff that we can do now. It's so cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the show logs automatically with YouTube now. Yeah. They're being generated by YouTube. Um, I've got my Instagram account, Dan. Are you on Instagram? Or you've been playing with playing yeah, in the yeah, Instagram yeah, yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's with the kids take pictures too, of right? microphones and cables. Yeah. People will love you for it. Okay. That's about all I do. Gotta start, <laughs> gotta start doing that. Um, <laughs> let's see here. We're here live every Monday night, six p.m. Next week, we want you all here if you're in L.A. But normally, if you want to be in the live studio audience, just write to us at the guys at vobs tv. And uh, put in the subject line, audience, and we'll uh, we'll let you in here. Speaking of Maybe. pronunciology, how yes. do you pronounce the name of our contributor of the picture for our Show Us Your Booth series? I'm going to go with David Hugh. Okay. It's H-O-U-X. Which is so you Hugh. figure it out. Let's look this it up must be the Hugh family crest <laughs> and apparently arsenal. Um, <laughs> Thanks for the picture. With, Send in your pictures. Yeah. Show us your booths. Yeah, show us your booths. Uh, let's see here. Well, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. vo to go go. Uh, dot com. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And... J. Michael Collins Demos. Uh, we also like to acknowledge, uh, the, uh, Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Our producer, Catherine Curridan, uh, Jack Daniel mm-hmm. on chat room duty. And tonight, Mike was running things. Yeah, Mike Merlino was... Pinch hitting for, for us mom. And, and did it. The dude's a quick <laughs> learner. Yeah. It is Hire a, a Z generation, folks. They're smart and they learn quick. They do. And Lee Penny, of course, for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Stay tuned for a really funny cartoon that uh, Jacob and I worked on uh, this week called Salt Man. That's coming right up. Uh, we know this is not an easy business. It's a lot to it. And uh, you need all the right information, and George and I are here to get it to you each and every week here on Voice Over Body Shop. Uh, and that's going to do it for us this week. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is Voice Over Body Shop. Or VO BS. BS. Stay tuned for Salt Man. We'll see you next week with our live concert. And remember, if it sounds good, it is good. One day, while attorney Seymour Saltman was eating an order of dull french fries at a round and about burger, he felt the fries needed salt. These fries are so dull, they could use some salt. Little did he know, he accidentally grabbed a radioactive salt shaker, pouring the contaminated salt on his fries. Eating the fries mutated him and turned him into Salt Man. The man with the powers of a salt shaker, stopping the world's crime one grain at a time. (laughs) Zimani is all mine! You won't catch!
catch me! He's getting away! I know just the person to call. Hello? Edward S. Cargo has robbed the bank and is getting away! Suffering sodium! I'll be there in a pinch! Salt! I mean, halt, Edward S. Cargo! Oh no! Salt man! Now to end your reign of crime and slime! The salt! It burns! You haven't seen the last of me! Well, I guess I'll have to take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> salt Man saves the day again. Tune in next seasoning for The Adventures of Salt Man.